Welcome to another video. Let's evaluate this simple integral using the form of the definition of an integral, of a definite integral. So that means you have a specified boundary, you have a specified function, you just need to know what the integral is going to be, the definite integral. But this is the form because you could actually accurately get the answer by approximation if only you increase the number of rectangles you're using for the approximation. So this is what it means. If you have a given boundary where you're going to start on your graph to the end and you have a given function, you can as well get your answer by getting n rectangles, okay? You calculate the area of each of the rectangles, which is given by this times this. This is the width of your rectangle, and this is what you have. Nice. And if you increase the number of rectangles to n, the more rectangles you have, the more accurate your answer is going to be. And as your number of rectangles goes to infinity, you will get the actual answer you're supposed to get. Okay, so that's the meaning of the form of the definition. So, for example, let's look at this integral. If I gave you this to do just as a calculus student, and I say integrate this, all you're going to do is say, hey, this is going to be the integral from 1 to 4 of x plus 3 dx. This is going to be, if you integrate x, you're going to get x squared over 2 plus 3x. Evaluate from 1 to 4. Well, if I plug in 4 here, it's going to be 16. If I plug in 1 here, it's going to be 1. So 16 minus 1 is going to be 15. So the first part is 15 over 2. If I plug in 4 here, it's going to be 12. If I plug in 1 here, it's going to be 3. So 12 minus 3 is going to be 9. Well, I know 9 can be written as 18 over 2. So 15 plus 18 is 33. So this is the value of this definite integral. But say I'm not allowed to go this way. I need to use the form by doing infinite approximation. Well, I get 33 over 2. Well, that's what we need to investigate. As long as you know that this is the definition and you also know what x sub i means and what delta x means, you'll get your answer. Let's get those definitions out. Well, x sub i is the ith point height that you're using for the computation of the areas, okay? So what we're going to do is say x sub i is the beginning. Where is the beginning? 1. It's going to be a plus the ith multiple of delta x. That is the number of rectangles you're adding, 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 adding to the beginning. And we need to know what delta x is. Well, it is differently the gap divided by the number of rectangles you're looking for. So we don't know, we're just gonna say it's B minus A divided by the number of rectangles we're looking for, and that's it. This is your delta X, and this is X sub I, and that's it. So in this case, for the problem we're solving, our X sub I, in this case, will be A is one, and this is going to be i times delta x. Oh, let's find delta x first. This implies that delta x for us in this case is going to be 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1 over n, which is 3 over n. Okay, so this is 3 over n times i. 3 over n times i. So we are going to be using this, and we're going to be using this. These are the two things you need to do anything, anytime in this case. Let's get into the video. So let's just go back to what we have. We know that this is what we have, the integral from 1 to 4 of x plus 3, and this is dx. Well, just the same way we did this analogy here in the uh, the form of the definition, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have it to be the limit as n goes to infinity of this sum. The sum is from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i. Well, 
This, what does this function? This is the function, okay? The function is x plus 3. So it's x sub i plus 3. That's all you have to do. That's what this means. Okay, just replace x with x sub i and multiply it by delta x. So it's going to be f, let me write it first, f of our x sub i is 1 plus 3 over n i. 1 plus 3 over n i multiplied by delta x. What's our delta x? It's 3 over n. That's it. Multiplication there. Okay, let me drag this to here. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1. Oh, what is f of this? Remember, what does f do? It adds 3 to x. So we're going to add 3 to this. If we add 3 to this, it's gonna, this is going to become 4. So it becomes 4 plus 3 over n times 3 over n. Okay, let me go this way which is the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, the sum from i equals 1 to n. When we distribute this, we're going to have 12 over n. And here we're going to have 9 over n squared plus 9 over n squared. Okay. Because we know that this is a definite integral and this would converge, I know that I can split these two this way. So I can say this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum i equals 1 to n of 12 over n plus the sum i equals 1 to n of 9 over n squared. I can do this, okay? Now, because what is changing is not n, what is changing is i, okay? I can treat the n terms or the, 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 the terms that contain, or the expressions with n as constants and move them to the back. So, what I have now can be written as the limit as n goes to infinity of, if I move this to the back, it becomes 12 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of what's going to be left is just 1. Plus, I do the same thing here. This is going to be 9 over n squared. I put the sum from i equals 1 to n. What's going to be left on the inside? Oh, I left out the i. Where is i? There's an i here. Come on. Oh, that was a terrible error. I'm sorry about that. I knew something was weird. Okay, i. Okay, and this has an i here. And there's got to be an i here left behind. Okay. Oh, there was an I. Sorry about that. So this I, the I is here too. And it's here. Okay. So now, this is what we have. What does this sum mean? I need to explain this quickly. What is this, what is this expression? If somebody says, what, what's the value of I equals 1 to 4 of 1? What does this mean? It means I need to repeat this one four times, starting from the first time, because this one does not change. So this is the same thing as one plus one plus one plus one. So whenever you have, if, so this is the same thing as one multiplied by four. So if this is changed to n, this becomes 1 multiplied by n. So this expression here, I can replace this with n. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 12 over n times n. 
Okay, let me explain the other one. The other one is i. Let's say I'm going from i equals 1 to 4. Because i is changing, it is not 1, the first thing I write is going to be 1. The second thing I write will not be 1, it's 2. Because i is increasing to 4. The next thing I write will be 3. The next thing I write will be 4. So, this is going to be the sum of the first four terms. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Or, if I change this to n, it becomes a sum of the first n terms. So, it keeps going until you get to n. And what is the sum of the first n terms? Remember our arithmetic progression? How do you find the sum of the first n terms? It is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. So if you recall that, that's what we're going to use in this case. Okay. And we can write this as n squared plus n over 2. n squared plus n over 2. So I'm going to be using that to replace this. And I'm going to be using n to replace this. And also, I think your teacher is going to give you the formula for these two. Maybe for this one and not this one. So you have to know this. So here we go. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of... The first sum is going to be 12 over n multiplied by n plus 9 over n squared multiplied by, I said this is going to be n squared plus n over 2. Okay, so let's simplify. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of, this will cancel this, so we have 12. Nice. Plus. What do we cancel here? This is going to be 9 over 2. This is going to be 9 over 2 multiplied by. If you use n to divide this, you're going to end up with um, 1. And here you're going to end up with 1 over n. Okay, 1 plus 1 over n. Aha. Okay, we can take this limit. <laughs> okay, if you take this limit, as n goes to infinity, this is going to go to zero, and that's it. This goes to zero. Yeah, that goes to zero. So you end up with 12 plus 9 over 2 times 1. Yes, so that's going to be 12 plus 9 over 2. What is 12 plus 9 over 2? That's 24 plus 9, 33 over 2. See, it was the same answer we got from the beginning. <laughs> Just follow the steps and never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.